Welcome. The hexagonal lattice which we have looked at last time is also interesting from geometric perspective, like it's the densest circle packing, densest sphere packing in two dimensions. It's also interesting from the number theoretical point of view because you can look at primes in this lattice. So it's a ring of Eisenstein integers which is somehow, you know, even nicer than the Gaussian integers which we have with the rectangular lattice. It's very nice also to play with it. I played in 2016, a whole summer. I made experiments in number theory, which is a lot of fun, and uh, I came up with two conjectures about Eisenstein integers. The first one is that every Eisenstein integer larger than three, with, with entries larger than three, so they are in a in a in a sector, they are a sum of two Eisenstein primes. So it's kind of an interesting thing, and I was uh, there are actually two exceptions, just two exceptions, which are called the Eisenstein ghosts, which uh, require you to go bigger than three because these ghosts have a equal to three. And then also you can a more elegant uh, version. Every Eisenstein integer is can be written as a sum of two Eisenstein primes. Very natural conjectures, but very difficult, for sure very difficult, because one can relate them to Bunyakovsky type conjectures, which are inaccessible at the moment for mathematics. There are also in Gaussian integers, there's, there, are, there are Goldbach conjectures, uh, every even Gaussian integer, positive Gaussian integer larger than two, the entries larger than two is a sum of two uh, Gaussian primes, which also is hard because it's related to a problem of Landau, uh, that there are infinitely many primes of the form n squared plus one, something I'm running actually since that summer 2016, I'm computing this kind of primes of the form n squared plus one. So it's running now for eight years and uh, I probably will stop after 10 years to see what is happening with the statistics. They are very regularly appear, these, these, these primes, but uh, one doesn't know uh, a lot. So this problem is associated to the complex numbers, which is the unique commutative associative division algebra, the complex numbers. And then there is also the quaternions, which are natural because the quaternions are the unique non-cumulative associative real division algebra. So it's over after that, there are the octonions, which also produce interesting packing problems and uh, which has recently been solved. But uh, in here, the packing of the D4 lattice is the densest packing known uh, to be the densest packing actually since a long time. So since 1872, even before, before that. So it's uh, and that was a kind of a story which uh, Hurwitz, who was a DTH, has really kind of worked on. So there are the Lipschitz integers, which are the even integers some, s s somehow, and these are the odd integers. These are called the Hurwitz integers. So they have one half, you add one half. What happens, of course, if you add one fourth plus one fourth plus one both fourth plus one fourth, you get one. So these are actually all the you know, uh, quaternions which have the property that this norm here is a usual rational integer. So this is, and then uh, uh, Horvitz also showed that you can characterize primes in this uh, ring. And these are the, the quaternions which have, quaternion integers which have a rational prime as norm. So this is quite nice. And then there is the unit sphere in this lattice, which is very beautiful. It's my favorite platonic solid in four dimensions. It's this one, and I just printed it out two days ago. So this is a, the 24 cell. It's a very beautiful object. So this is the unit sphere in that lattice, and it's one of the six platonic solids which you have in four dimensions. So there are five platonic solids in three dimensions, there are six in four dimensions, afterwards there are only three, as Schleffli has shown, Ludwig Schleffli, who was a Swiss mathematician and high school teacher. That's a very beautiful thing. I, re I turned it in R4, and then the stereographic projection in such a way that it can be printed nicely, right? If you don't make it nice, so you need a lot of support and sometimes it can even go wrong. 
like uh, I have an example here of something I printed and I didn't start you know if you have not not a good start it doesn't do a good job with with printing and so I kind of that's why I turned it so in such a way in four dimensions with angles pi over six four uh, rotations in pi over six such that two four six of them are just on the bottom so you have kind of a little bit of symmetry but it's not that uh, there is a collision between the vertices there's some collision between the uh, edges but not the vertices so it's a very beautiful object is self-dual that's why it's kind of the most beautiful one <laughs> it's the only self-dual beside you know the tetrahedra, which which actually not uh, kind of should not be considered platonic solids because they are actually simplices they are uh, parts of a simplicity complex so there are 24 vertices 96 edges then 96 triangles so that's the duality and then there are octahedra now as chambers so the chambers are not tetrahedra but the chambers are octahedra that's why it's only a delta set or you know you can realize it as a cw complex similarly then uh, the the dodecahedron is not a simplicial complex that's a delta set that's a cw complex if you kind of you can write it either as a cw complex which i don't like so much or you can write it as a delta set which i like very much because it is a better data structure to work with and so what you have here you just have to implement the sets and then you can write down the dirac operator you can do all kind of you can do all the mathematics which you want to do that's why delta sets are really nice <clears throat> and uh, so that's the Thing. And I'm actually interested here in kind of, I was interested just in that context of here, the, this was a fixed point of, unique fixed point of the soft barycentric refinement. And so there is a density of states is kind of a natural, like, you know, central limit measure. And uh, so it would be interesting to have in four dimensions something natural as a renormalization map, but then this should be a fixed point. And I'm pretty sure this exists, but I don't know yet how to do that because you have to work in delta sets and not in simplicial complexes. <clears throat> so it's so one challenge I was uh, thinking about over the years. I don't yet know uh, how to do that. And uh, uh, this is what I wanted to do, talk about. Oh, there is also a nice conjecture, which I also formulated in 2016, which is about uh, primes and Goldbach in four dimensions. So it says that every Lipschitz integer, so kind of the even ones are uh, with entries larger than one of the sum, sum of two Hurwitz primes, it's a kind of the odd primes, or that's kind of the weak, kind of weak Goldbach version, every integer quaternion with the in entries larger than two is the sum of two quaternion primes. Also this probably very, very difficult because it's related to problems in number theory, which one knows to be hard. But it's uh, kind of interesting too. Maybe this, maybe it's wrong. Maybe, you know, you have a, a very large counter example. I don't believe it. I think it's, these are kind of natural conjectures. They are getting more and more likely, these Goldbach statements, if you're looking at larger and larger numbers, but nobody has proven that. And that's it for today.